five times a surrogate. Wow. Tell me why you became a surrogate and tell me about the experience of become, of being a surrogate. Okay, so um, I started being a surrogate 20 years ago. So my eldest surrogate baby is now 19. Um, so they have been spread out over the last 20 years. And for me, it was a really easy choice to be a surrogate because it was more a case of why wouldn't I do this for somebody? You know, you can change somebody's life and create a family. So why wouldn't you do that? If you've got the ability to help somebody, then surely you should do that if you feel that you can. Um, so for me, it wasn't it wasn't a case of why would I do it? It was just why wouldn't I? It was a really easy decision for me to make. <laughs> and just explain the current laws and how you go about it in, in this country, Sarah. So the UK laws at the moment um, are uh, very poor at the moment. So we have a trust-based um, altruistic uh, approach to surrogacy in the UK. So it's not commercial. Nobody can make any money from it, not um, surrogates or um, any agencies that help um, surrogates and, and intended parents to meet. Um, and basically, there are, no, um, there are no guarantees there for the intended parents going through surrogacy. So the surrogate baby um, is the uh, in-law, the mother of the child, and the surrogate's husband or wife or civil partner is automatically classed as uh, the other parent of that child-in-law, regardless of genetics. Um, so it puts surrogates at very great risk of being left with a baby that they're not genetically related to, um, that they didn't plan for or, or, or didn't want, essentially. Um, so the law at the current moment is uh, not fit for purpose, really. It doesn't really really help anybody, least of all the child involved. Really clear explanation, Sarah. Thank you very much. I'm going to bring Andrew, your Member of Parliament, in now. So normally when we do these constituency surgeries, the constituent has reached out to their MP because they need their help on something. But you and Sarah began working with each other... Uh, not via that method. Tell us yeah, how. It all happened a bit accidentally, really, uh, because I'd watched a documentary about couples having to go to Mexico, um, and there were questions about the uh, welfare of the women who put themselves forward to be surrogates. Um, and I'd watched this documentary, and I think I'd put some parliamentary questions down, or I'd reached out to Surrogacy UK, uh, who are the, the charity uh, in this sector here in the UK. And then uh, we, we connected. And then it turned out that Sarah, um, who was the chair, was the chair at that time of Surrogacy UK, um, was actually one of my constituents, which it's is just, fortuitous. I know, it was just like completely fortuitous. Um, so then I'd start, uh, then we all started working together and we're trying to get, obviously, the law changed and updated. All of this legislation is from the 80s, um, you know, when surrogacy was qu quite a new thing. Um, so that's why we'd ended up working together. But it was just all really by accident that we ended up connecting. And so w what have you been able to do in your capacity as a Member of Parliament to, to change the laws that Sarah wants to get changed? Well, we set up the all-party parliamentary group uh, on surrogacy, which I'm chair of, and which the uh, Surrogacy UK provide the secretariat for. Um, so we, we then, through working together, um, uh, we reached out to ministers, met with ministers, um, and then uh, I like to think we played a small part in helping to get the uh, one of the health ministers to agree to the funding uh, for a law commission study into a whole review of the legislation in this whole area. Lots of other people were, were pushing for that as well. So that's happened. The Law Commission is uh, will report and produce its draft piece of legislation at the end of this year. And then it's trying to keep the pressure up to get the parliamentary time. Um, it's all got delayed through Brexit, through lots of general elections, as you'll remember. Um, so we want this law updating, specifically really to deal with the, the issue um, Sarah raised there. You know, these are people's you know, genetic children. They're 100% you know, the intended parents' genetic children very often. But not, but that, those parents are not listed as the parents at birth and have to go through a court process. So the legislation is just outdated. I'm sure it was a good stab at the time, um, but you know things have moved on. You know families are created in all sorts of different ways. So we need this legislation updating. Back to you, Sarah. Where next for the campaign, as far as you're concerned? 
Um, well, we definitely want the intended parents to be um, parents at birth. Um, they should be the ones making the medical decisions for their children. Um, they should be the ones allowed into NICU if there's any problems with the birth or anything. They should be the ones that should be allowed to register their babies and um, go on that sort of momentous first appointment to the registry office and get their baby's birth certificate. Um, and surrogates overwhelmingly um, wanted that for them. Um, you know, so so if we could if we could get the parents to actually be legal parents at birth, it would be a great relief for the surrogates, um, and obviously be in the best interest of the child. So that's really what we're we're keeping our fingers crossed and hoping that the law commission will um, approve. I suppose. Sarah, do you have any advice for anyone who is thinking of becoming a surrogate? Um, yes, uh, take your time. Uh, do your research, become really informed. There's uh, lots of Facebook groups, um, lots of websites that can help you um, with UK specific information. Um, but take your time, research, talk to your family about it, reach out to other surrogates. Um, that's probably my best piece of advice is talk to other surrogates before you do it. Surrogates will tell you um, the best way to do it. We're really quite protective of surrogacy in the UK. Um, we don't want to see anything go wrong. So certainly take a, a year or so in just researching and getting informed and being really comfortable with that decision before you sort of uh, meet anybody that you would like to help. So that would be my advice. Really good advice. Um, Andrew, um, final question to you. So you started being interested in this issue by watching a documentary, but just tell us what you have learned from people like Sarah, real people who you can chat to, who are your constituents um, about this? I mean, it's, it's, it's even better having a constituent who's, you know, um, has gone through this and done this so many times. I mean, I think the women who put themselves forward to be surrogates are incredible, um, you know, and it's done in a proper way in the UK. It's on a non-commercial basis, um, you know, so the care of the women is, is at the top of um, everyone's priority. And, you know, I, I think it's just absolutely brilliant that, you know, Sarah has helped people create families um, who may otherwise not have had children. So, Look, it's just, I mean, it proves the power as well of how you can work together to really affect change. Um, so, you know, I think that, um, you know, the surrogates in this country do such a great job in helping create families. And we want to make that environment even safer, make the legal position uh, clearer so we don't have a situation where people have had to hand babies over in NHS car parks um, because the technical parent isn't the intended parent. So, look, you know, I think, you know, and, and charity, it's one of those things, as you'll know from Parliament as well sometimes, like something that seems a bit of a niche issue mm -hmm. uh, actually if you really get involved in it you can really have a, an impact on and you know the, the surrogacy uk and all of the, the charities have done um such a good job of raising the profile and my job as an mp is now just to take all their good work and actually get the law changed and that's exactly why we do these constituency uh surgeries to show why it can help people to get in touch with their mp uh, to further their campaign and change the law even Thank you so much for coming on the programme to you, Sarah, and to Pleasure. Sarah's MP, Andrew <laughs> Percy. Thank you.